Hi, my name is Claudius, and I'm going to be going through the emergency umbilical venous line. Now, this is a great procedure for access in kids typically under 10 days of age, especially a child who was born in the emergency department. Of course, sometimes you're lucky enough to get an IV in these kids, and we can always use an IO. But IOs tend to blow very frequently in these younger kids, so if you can get an umbilical venous line, that is great. Some emergency departments have their own kit for this procedure, and sometimes we have to put the supplies together on our own. But if you order a kit from the NICU upstairs, or the NICU kit is the one that you're using, you're gonna get a big deluxe kit with a whole lot of stuff that you don't need. And that's because the umbilical lines done upstairs in the NICU are a little bit different than what we're doing on an emergency basis. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to open that kit up and get rid of most of the stuff in it so you only have the supplies that you really need for this procedure. The most important equipment is going to be your sterile equipment, gloves, a drape and betadine, a scalpel, umbilical tape, hemostats or forceps, a five French feeding tube or umbilical line, a saline filled syringe connected to a three-way stopcock, and tape. So we have our baby, in spite of the lovely yellow hat, she is actually critically ill, and this is a procedure that we can do up to somewhere around 10 days. There are sources that say 14. I haven't had a lot of success after a week of life, and of course, the earlier on the better. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clean the umbilical cord and the surrounding skin. Next, we're gonna need some type of a sterile drape or sterile towels to put around the umbilicus. Next, we're gonna wrap the umbilical tape at the base of the umbilicus. If you don't have umbilical tape, you certainly can use a suture instead. And I've closed this with a knot that I can secure once I have my line in place. I don't want it too tight at this point because it might keep me from advancing my line. Next, we need to cut the umbilical cord one to two centimeters from the base. So I'm going to grab a hemostat or a forceps to hold it up a little bit, and then go ahead and cut So if you take a close look at the remaining segment of the umbilical cord, you'll see the face, the two umbilical arteries making up the eyes, and the umbilical vein making up the surprised mouth, like that. Our goal is going to be to cannulate the umbilical vein. Once you've found the umbilical vein, it may still be a little bit difficult to cannulate. There might be clots that you need to remove, and you might have to take a little time to use the narrow forceps and dilate up the size of the vein as it is closing. Next, we're going to prepare our umbilical line or feeding tube. This happens to be a feeding tube by flushing it with saline. Next, you're going to insert the umbilical line into the umbilical vein. You can facilitate this by using your forceps to pull out on the vein and up on the umbilicus. You're going to need a second operator to assist with this for two reasons. It's helpful to have somebody else pulling up on the umbilicus, but you also want to be able to withdraw as you insert. These umbilical lines are not checked by x-ray. These are emergent lines that we need to use right away. And if it is inserted too far and gets into the portal circulation, it can cause perforation, 
It can cause a clot with subsequent portal hypertension. It can cause hepatic necrosis, depending on what is infused through the line. So withdraw as you insert, and once you get blood, insert the line about a centimeter more and then stop. It should not be in more than four to five centimeters to feel safe that you're not into the portal circulation. If by four to five centimeters, you have not gotten blood back from the syringe that you're aspirating with, you may be in a false lumen. In that case, consider removing the line and trying again after ensuring that you're in the lumen of the umbilical vein. Once you have the line in, the next step is to secure that. Start by tightening down on the umbilical tape, and then we're going to want to secure it with some additional tape as well. One of the well-described methods of doing this, because they are so easily pulled out, is the H-type method. And that's where you're going to make a little line of tape across the umbilical line and tape it to the baby's abdomen, like this. So I'm going to put two pieces of tape across the line, which will be secured between the two pieces of tape. And then on either side, I'm gonna use additional tape to fix this to the child's abdomen, giving the line enough laxity that the tape doesn't pull it out, but maintaining it in a position that the providers don't easily dislodge the line. So if this gets tugged on gently, it's still well secured within the baby. And now you're ready to use your umbilical line. Like I said, it does not require any radiographic confirmation as long as you're able to withdraw blood and it's not in past five centimeters. And this can be used for anything that you need to infuse, dextrose, epinephrine, fluids.